I actually really do think that we all instinctively knew that 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 park and the things that go on with animals for entertainment is wrong. You sort of cringe, but then you look around and everybody's smiling and you think, okay, it's okay. Nothing in that park is really what it seems. I thought this was a place with happy whales and safe trainers, and it's really the opposite. That's what I've been feeling this whole time. I knew it. I knew it wasn't what it seemed. Hey, little Rico, that's me and the director of the controversial new film, Blockfish, which debuted last night on CNN, and lots of people are talking about it. SeaWorld has denounced the film, calling it distorted and misleading. You can read SeaWorld's entire statement on my webpage, hlntv.com slash Jane. Now, we reached out to SeaWorld as well as these other organizations seeking to get the other side, all declined to offer a guest to appear on camera to defend animal theme parks, zoos, and or aquariums. Now, if you missed Blackfish last night, you have another chance to watch it this Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern on CNN. Here's a clip. This is Detective Rivera with the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Today's date is February 24th, 2010. The time is 4.16. In the room with me right now is a Thomas George Tobin. Is that correct? Correct. Did you see any blood in the water or anything like that? Well, that's part of it. She was uh, scalped, and there was no blood. Okay. So pretty much we knew then that the heart wasn't beating. Once they were able to pull her away, how did he let go of the... He didn't. He never let go of the... Uh, the arm? The arm. He swallowed it. He swallowed it? So the arm is nowhere... Right. Now, Rico, that was a law enforcement interview about how Tillicum the Whale killed SeaWorld trainer Don Branshaw. When I talked to hip-hop mogul Russell Simmons, he called the film a milestone and a game-changer, taking the issue of the rights of animals in captivity to a whole new level of serious discussion. TMZ star Harvey Levin, another one of the most powerful men in Hollywood, agrees. Harvey you, with TMZ, have your finger on the pulse of popular culture. Is it cruel to keep an animal in an area that is much smaller, much, much smaller than where they'd be able to roam if they were in the wild? This is just such basic stuff. Um, do people go crazy in solitary? Yes. Is jail extremely uncomfortable because you're confined to a five by seven cell? Of course. So why would it be different for an animal that is used to roaming the ocean and swimming for miles and miles suddenly to be confined uh, by uh, you know, a football field or less space than that? Of course it's different. Of course it's confining. Of course, I mean, it just is such basic reasoning that how could it not be? SeaWorld says the overwhelming majority of their animals are born in captivity. Do you think that makes a difference to the orcas? I think maybe it makes oh, some difference, but do I personally believe that animals have an innate feeling about how they're supposed to be in the universe? Yes. And I don't believe that if somebody is born, uh, a human being is born in a jail cell, that they're going to be comfortable in a jail cell because it's not who we are. We have legs, we have mobility, we have a brain. And that tells me that I want to move beyond that jail cell. I don't see how an animal is any different. What would you tell Americans to increase their compassion for other animals beyond dogs and cats? For me, what changed it was reading one of your books. And that was the day that I stopped eating meat. You need that experience, that one thing, that exposure to the consequences of, of meat on a table. And once you understand that, I gotta tell you, it hasn't been hard for me. And I feel better physically, and I feel better as a human being. Even though people are kind of aware of it, I still hear a lot of mocking, a lot of people saying, oh, you're one of these crazy people who won't eat pork. And then when you raise the issue of pigs, they just kind of poo-poo it. So I wish I could say that there's been this dramatic sea change. Honestly, I don't see it. Straight out to Peter Singer, Princeton University professor of bioethics and the author of the groundbreaking book, Animal Liberation, the definitive classic of the animal movement. Some people say that without zoos and aquariums, visitors would not understand or love these animals normally found in the wild. Jack Hanna spoke about it on Larry King Live. 
Tens of millions of people have gone to SeaWorld. SeaWorld at Larry has released more whales, dolphins, sea turtles, manatees into the wild than any conservation company in the world. They've also spent more money on research than any conservation company in the world. The records, you know, we all go with records. Records speak for themselves what these folks have done. 80% uh, killer whales born at SeaWorld. You know, there, there are a lot of killer whales out in the wild, Larry. These are ambassadors to their cousins in the wild. We have to teach people, Larry, about our animal world in the wild. If we don't, Larry, we don't have time left to save these beautiful creatures. SeaWorld says that Blackfish, quote, paints a distorted picture that withholds from viewers key facts about SeaWorld. Among them, SeaWorld is one of the most respected zoological institutions that SeaWorld rescues, rehabilitates, and returns to the wild. Hundreds of animals every year, and that SeaWorld commits millions of dollars annually to conservation and scientific research. Peter Singer, are zoos and aquariums the best way for people to understand these animals? No, I think what people understand from zoos and aquariums is that animals are just ours to use and to entertain and to train to perform silly tricks. Uh, I don't think that's really respecting the wild. I think that zoos and aquaria teach exactly the wrong lesson. And if you really want to get people to understand what's going on, well, there are excellent documentaries where people have followed animals, whales, for example, out in the deep, and you can understand their social relationships, the way in which they're a social group, the way in which the mothers care for their young. We can empathize with that. You don't really see that at SeaWorld. You just see performing tricks. And I think it's completely the wrong message. And if, if people say, well, these animals are ambassadors for their, their, their cousins in the wild, that's totally wrong. I mean, they never chose to be ambassadors, and they certainly never chose to perform the kinds of tricks that they're trained to do at SeaWorld. Now, straight out to zoologist and Animal Planet's large predator expert, Dave Salmoni. Uh, thanks for joining us, Dave. The movie's battleground is, should these killer whales be kept in captivity? What do you think? I think in the state in which they're kept right now, the, the easy answer is no. I think the difficult answer starts coming in when uh, you know, the population declines in the wild and we start to discuss whether we want to keep killer whales around. If that starts to happen, we need to start to figure out how we can keep the genetics around and keep them in captivity. But in a small, little, tiny tub the way that they are, you know, I think the easy answer is no, they shouldn't be kept like that. Now, uh, critics say breeding prolongs the problem and condemns the offspring to a lifetime of captivity and that they are sometimes separated from their mothers, even though these animals normally remain in family groups their entire lives. What do you think? Yeah, I think in, in, in these cases, as you say, I don't think the killer whale has any type of standard of living where they are, breeding programs or anything else when you can find an animal this much. Uh, that being said, I do feel like zoos and aquariums at times do have a conservational effort towards other species where we know they're getting wiped out and we need to keep them around. Uh, so I think the, the discussion needs to turn towards how can we make this an acceptable thing when we need them. When, an animal, when we have to decide, do we need to step in and save this animal from ex extinction? In that case, how do we then have a breeding program where you know, it isn't so hard on the animal and it isn't so confined in such small cases. So I, I think just we need to start to have a higher level and standard of what we accept in captivity. And talk about all these issues. Uh, Dave Salmoni, thank you so much for joining us. Have you ever Thanks wondered <laughs> what's the difference between a zoo and a sanctuary? Well, Rico, we're going to tell you next. I have to be behind an enclosure, but the reality is we do not want to be in business. We wish we were not a necessity. That's what we are. We don't buy, sell, breed, or trade. We use these animals for no commercial use whatsoever.